Hi, this is Terry Cuti with Deep Sea Foundation. I'm joined today by Dr. Philip Stillert, who comes from Ypru in Belgium. He completed his medical studies at the Catholic University of Louvain. After his medical training, he further specialized in general surgery. His particular preference was for cardiovascular surgery. Dr. Stillert moved to Australia to receive additional training in tissue engineering research and regenerative medicine at the famous Bernard O'Brien Institute of Microsurgery at Melbourne. He also trained in microsurgery at the University of Melbourne in, at St. Francis Hospital. He was trained by Professor Dr. Wayne Morrison, who is a pioneer in microsurgery. Upon his return from Australia, he completed additional training in plastic and reconstructive surgery at Ghent University Hospital and Ghent University. After that training, he became a staff member at the Plastic Surgery Department at Ghent University Hospital. Today, he is going to share his expertise in a particular type of breast reconstruction flap surgery called the LAP flap, which stands for lumbar artery perforator flap, which is often referred to as the love handle. Dr. Stiller will explain why this flap is sometimes used as an alternate flap, who might be a candidate, and what recovery is like. Dr. Stiller, you um, present at some pretty amazing international conferences. So I welcome and thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yes, we met at the London Breast Meeting this yes. year. So this is, this is just a great, fantastic follow-up. I'm going to let you begin screen sharing and start your presentation so that hopefully Patients will learn more about this, but also other surgeons. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Um, yeah. First of all, Terry, um, I really would like to thank you for this uh, kind of invitation and the opportunity to uh, present uh, the lumbar flap in uh, breast reconstruction. Yeah, very welcome. And, you know, um, breast reconstruction um, it can be quite challenging. And it's, it's, it's like with, with every kind of surgery. So be, before you start doing surgery, and specifically for the breast, I think it's important to realize that um, you need to realize that you need to have some goals, some, some targets, you know, what you would like to achieve in breast surgery. And this is true for aesthetic breast surgery and also and specifically for reconstructive breast surgery. So, you know, as a surgeon, you would like to create, first of all, a breast that looks beautiful. You know? So it should be aesthetically pleasing. Um, for the patient also, I think the breast should feel warm, should feel natural. And the breast should also be comfortable for the patient. I think she shouldn't experience like some kind of discomfort on a daily basis, um, you know, at the level of the reconstructive breast. I think that's very important. And also important is that you have to create some dynamism in the breast. So the breast should move when the body changes position also. So you shouldn't reconstruct like a static volume sitting on the chest wall. And of course, the result should be stable at the long term. That's, that's obvious. So the patient shouldn't come back like every every five years to, to have uh, some kind of revision, some kind of surgery to revise uh, that breast reconstruction. And also important, I think, is something that we neglect often is you have to create harmony in the human body. So the upper body and the lower body should have a nice rela relationship uh, with uh, each other mm, beautiful message and i love that yeah i think I, th I think that's important you know those goals that you need to achieve mm -hmm. you know and and i think that that's very important mm -hmm. and and you know in in breast reconstruction um essentially 
a surgeon, he has two options. Uh, he, he uses a foreign material, which are the implants, or he can use uh, the patient's own tissue, which, which is the autologous reconstruction. And um, I think it's very important, and that's why I showed this balance. It's whatever technique is chosen, you should always tip the balance towards the autologous part. You know what I mean? So because mm -hmm. the autologous part or the autologous-based reconstruction using the patient's own tissue is actually based on one of the basic principles in, in uh, reconstructive surgery. And that principle is that um, what has been removed in the human body should be replaced by a lookalike tissue. So that's mm -hmm. one of those basic principles, really important principles. So that's why whatever we choose in breast reconstruction, try to tip that balance towards the autologous part. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Now, because, you know, for the material like implants, you know, mm -hmm. most of the breast reconstructions in the world are still done with implants. Mm -hmm. And often you see that the goals in breast reconstruction with implants are, it happens that they are not, you know, they're not achieved, you know. For example, in this patient, she came to my outpatient clinic and she had only, it's only one year ago, it's one year after surgery and she had a breast reconstruction with implants behind mm -hmm. the muscle. Mm -hmm. You can see that the goals ha haven't been achieved. So it, it's not beautiful. It is a static volume. It doesn't move. She experienced discomfort, so it's not comfortable for her. The breast feels cold because it's, it's filled with silicon. The breast doesn't feel natural. It feels hard because of the implant. The result is not stable. She will have, she definitely will need uh, some, some kind of surgery to, to, to help her out. And also the harmony, there's no harmony. She's too skinny and, and the breast is too, there's too much fullness at the, mm -hmm. at the, at the, at the thoracic cage. And, so, and what we saw here, Dr. Uh, Stiller, not to interrupt, but this is called animation deformity, is it not? That's animation deformity. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a good point because this implant is actually uh, in certain behind the muscle. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we use that muscle trying to cover the implant. But actually, in my opinion, muscle is a tissue that has... Uh, a specific function in the human body. Eh? Mm -hmm. The tissue that you need to cover things is actually fat tissue. Now, fat is, is the ideal tissue to cover things. It's, it's not muscle, but, but because um, it's some kind of emergency uh, procedure is using that muscle trying to cover the implant. And in mm -hmm. most of the cases, only the upper part of the implant is, is covered by muscle. Um, but, and this is why it causes animation deformity. At the long term, in, in those cases, what, what happens is that because of the uh, because of the action of the muscle, the implant will actually migrate um, towards the outer part of the body and upwards. And mm -hmm. so these are the typical appearances of implant-based reconstructions. Mm -hmm. And and the breast is not beautiful in those cases because they don't have a nice lower pole expansion. It's just a static volume sitting on the chest wall. And this is actually seen, this is her CT scan, and you can see how uh, we didn't tip the balance in this case. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, so the surgeon didn't tip the balance. He only tipped the balance towards the other side, towards the um, uh, foreign material. So this breast is completely filled with silicon. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think we can do better than that also nowadays, even when we use implants, we don't use the, the technique of fat grafting. But as I said before, um, those basic principles of replace like with like, it's like breast tissue can be replaced by fat tissue. So we need fat. And, you know, one of those standard procedures in autologous breast reconstruction is the deep flap. Right? Mm -hmm. so most of the patients, you can find uh, an ample amount of fat in the abdominal region, in the belly, underneath the umbilicus. And this can be actually transferred to the, the, the breast to reconstruct the breast. And it can be done for a uh, immediate breast reconstruction, or it can be done for uh, a late breast reconstruction. 
And you know, the, the deep flap is the standard approach. It's like the goal is the cornerstone of autologous breast reconstruction. Because in most of the cases, you know, you're able to harvest, we call it harvesting, uh, an ample amount of tissue and, and transfer it to uh, the chest wall. Then, mm -hmm. you know, very often you do see those patients that, you know, they are very skinny. They don't have enough tissue uh, in the abdominal region or in the belly. So what can you do for these patients? Uh, you have patients also that come to your office and they had uh, a previous uh, abdominal surgery, for example, mm -hmm. like a, a, a tummy tuck or a liposuction. Right. So in those cases, you can't use uh, the deep flap. You have patients who had previous deep flap surgery. And for example, she had a bilateral breast reconstruction with a deep flap and she had a failure on the left side and then came to our department uh, for a second opinion. Or you have patients who had in the past a previous deep flap procedure on one side and then afterwards they have been diagnosed with breast cancer on the other side. For example, in this case, so she had a, a deep flap, I think it's more than uh, 20 or 15 or 20 years ago, and then she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So what they, they did, a, uh, an implant-based reconstruction of the left breast with the latissimus mm -hmm. dorsi flap. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, the, the, the implant is ruptured and she needs a new reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So in all those specific cases, you know, we need uh, an alternative uh, for those patients. And uh, back in those days, our first choice was the yes gap flap. And, and what is the yes gap? It's um, a, 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 a tissue that is removed or taken from the gluteal or the buttock region. And so, and that was a nice flap. That, that was a nice alternative for the deep flap. But more recently, the last uh, couple of years, we, we've been using the, the, the lumbar flap more often. And the lumbar flap is actually taken from the left hand region in lower back. And so, and it also can, even in skinny patients, you often would be surprised how much tissue can be removed in that region to reconstruct a, a breast. And, it was my colleague, uh, Professor Valandet also, he, he, he saw this article of um, Dr. De Weert from Norway, and he was one of the first surgeons that uh, described this type of flap as a case report. So he did one case and, and he reconstructed in 2003, it was published in 2003, he reconstructed a breast with the lumbar flap. So. So we started using this flap again, and, and now we have a nice series of patients that have been helped with uh, this kind of flap. And um, the anatomy of this flap is, is very consistent. It's a very um, you know, reliable anatomy. And uh, so uh, essentially, skin and subcutaneous fat uh, are removed from the love handle region. And um, the, the tissue that is removed is uh, vascularized by a small vessel. And that vessel, you can see it on the picture, it's a vessel that actually um, originates at uh, the outer border of the, there's, there is like a, a big muscle in, in, in the back region. It's called the, the erector spinae muscle. And so we, we follow that muscle and that vessel actually originates at the border of that muscle. And mm -hmm. another advantage of, of this flap, very long uh, sen uh, sensate nerves um, that, that goes into the skin to, to give you uh, the, the skin sensation. So these nerves can also be uh, uh, incorporated in the flap or removed together with the flap, even to restore sensation in the breast. So anatomy is very consistent. Uh, it's it's um, issue taken in the love final region above you know, the iliac crest. And what is the iliac crest? The iliac crest is the, 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 the bone, uh, the bone in lower back, uh, mm. of the bone of the hip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the nice thing about the lumbar is that um, often you are very surprised how much tissue can be taken even in the, the result later on. And, and you, she's very skinny. She's not a good candidate for a deep flap because she doesn't have a belly. And uh, she needed a bilateral reconstruction, a late reconstruction. And she came for a second opinion. So 
and in the other center, they advised her to, to, to use implants, which would have been a bad idea, I think. And so what we did is a lumbar flap. And, and this is her CT scan showing the amount of, so the black, so, you know, the, you have the skin and then you, you know, the, the, the black tissue is actually the fat tissue that you see. And, and this is a nice amount of fat that can be removed to reconstruct uh, the breast. And um, this is a, a nice medical illustration showing you what the lumbar flap is. So the lumbar flap, it's, it's, it takes all that fat in, in the love handle region. There is a nice nerve, which is the yellow, the yellow structure that you see. The red structure is the, is the blood vessel. And, and both of them, they, they can easily be dissected out in between those muscles. And, and the, whole, the whole structure, like skin, fat, uh, uh, vessel, and nerve can be removed and transplanted to uh, the breast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's important um, before you do this kind of surgery is to, to have not only to have the right indication to perform this surgery, but also what we also do, we always perform like an, a CT scan. And the CT scan is also a standard exam that we perform uh, in, a, in a deep flat breast reconstruction because it, it shows us, it's, it's like, a very nice, uh, it's like a, a roadmap for us. Uh, we, it, we, we can visualize how the anatomy looks inside the human body. And it is important. It shows us how, how um, it shows us the quality of the vessels. It shows us the course of the vessels. It shows us if there are any vascular anomalies also. It also shows us the amount of tissue that can be taken. And um, so I think it's a very important exam that needs to be done. And here you can see those perforators uh, originating from the aorta and actually going through the muscles towards, um, towards the subcutaneous the anatomy very nicely. Now, um, when we perform a lumbar flap, we, we, we draw the flap in the love handle region with the patient standing up. And so there, there are some crucial landmarks. So the first landmark is the orange line, which is the, the, the outer border of that big spinal muscle. And then the white dotted line is actually the, the iliac crest. And so it, it's the bone, you can feel the bone. And, and actually, as I said before, the anatomy of, of this flap is very consistent. If you, if you take your finger and, and you put your finger you know, that dot that you see, you can really palpate with your finger uh, just above the bone and at the outer border of the uh, of that big muscle, you can feel a dimple. And and that's that's where your your vessel, we call it the lumbar perforator vessel. So it's, it's the lowest one. That's where that vessel is located. So once again, anatomy is, is consistent. So very straightforward, very consistent, but uh, from a technical point of view, um, this kind of reconstruction can be quite uh, challenging. I will show you later on. Okay. So, um, you know, um, from a surgical point of view, so the surgical technique is, first of all, what we do is we position the patient in a prone position. So um, I think that's the easiest way to to take out or to remove this kind of flap. And so, because we remove the, the flap, we start our dissection um, at the spinal region, and then we move towards the outer part of the human body. So, and this is how it goes. So once again, it's a perforated flap. That means that you, you, you don't damage the muscle, the spinal, that big muscle is left uh, intact. So you only remove skin, fat and a vessel and and the nerve and so and everything is removed the biggest disadvantage of the flap and this is why i show you this picture is that that fast that pedicle we call it the, the vessel in the flap is very short it's mm. a very short it can be so like two centimeters a maximum maximum three centimeters so that's too short from a technical point of view to to hook up those vessels to the mammary vessels mm. because now we have to restore the blood flow 
And the, there would be, a, uh, not only it's too short because there would be too much tension on, on that anastomosis, but there's also like a mismatch because the vessels of the lumbar flap are very small. They are, mm. Sometimes they are only like one or two millimeters while, while the, the vessels at the, at the, um, the memory vessels, they easily have a diameter of often like, like three millimeters or even more. So it's difficult to hook them up. There is like a mismatch. Right. You've got a hole like this versus maybe one like this, yeah, just yeah. as so a it, visual. It, so, and whenever you would, if you would perform this kind of anastomosis, the risk of failure is, 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 is non-neglectable, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is the reason why we need to, we need to lengthen this, this vessel. Yeah? We need to lengthen this vessel, but we also need to overcome the mismatch in the diameters. Mm -hmm. And, and we do that, uh, in order to do that, what we do, we, we remove a, um, a piece of vessel in the groin region. So as you can see on the right picture, so it's like six to seven centimeters, we call it a graft. It's a vascular graft. And we take that graft and what we do with that graft, we, and we, we hook up that graft or we connect the graft to that small vessel of the lumbar flap. Uh, on the, on, on the, we, we put the whole flap on the side table, we take the graft and we and we sit down and we anastomose under the microscope that graft to the perforator. Yeah? You know what I mean? It's it's like we are lengthening mm -hmm. the, the 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 vessel, and the advantage is that the diameter of uh, that uh, graft will now fit the diameter of the mammary vessels where we have to hook it up. So because... then if I could ask a question, the, the incision that you make in the groin area to get that vascular graft, I think that's what you call it. Um, how, how big is that incision then in the front of the patient? It's uh, an incision of four centimeters, four ah, centimeter incision. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's like, a, it's even smaller than an appendectomy, you know? Yeah. Okay. And so, and because you know the vessel in the groin is actually it is the vessel that is normally used for deep flap reconstruction mm -hmm. it's the deep inferior epigastric artery so it's the same so mm -hmm. and and these vessels can easily be you know the the there is no mismatch with the mammary vessels where we have to connect it to the chest wall makes so, complete sense great yeah, explanation so, and this is one of those you no know, technical you know um, uh, challenges in 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 this in this kind of uh, breath uh, in this kind of technique. Mm -hmm. So and then the whole structure is is then transferred to the chest wall, you know, um, and and then actually uh, anastomose to to the mammary vessels. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it would be nice to 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 show you perhaps also some cases because um, it 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 really. Mm -hmm illustrate really well the, the power of, of, of this technique. For, for example, this patient, she um, she also, most of the, the patients, they come for like a second opinion. So she said, you know, I had the bilateral mastectomy. They advised me to have implants because, you know, um, I'm not a candidate for a deep flap procedure. I, I don't have enough uh, uh, tissue in, in the abdominal region. And if, if you look at her, love hand that can be used so the first step in the reconstruction is try to reconstruct the the basis of the breast so the skin that you see is skin taken from the love hand region so then the patient she waits six months uh, we wait until everything settles down the, the the swelling will will fade away you know you know that gravity uh, shapes the breast so the breast will start to you know come down a little bit and then after six months, she will come back for uh, secondary revisions or corrections to obtain the, the symmetry. So we, we have a good foundation already. So then she comes back. Then we, we, we have been able to remove the whole skin because the original skin of the, of the breast, uh, we have been able to recover it. And we did, we did um, a nipple reconstruction 
with that leftover skin from the from the lower femoral region. So this is then the patient one year after the procedure. And then recently I saw her back and, and this is like four years after the operation. And you can actually see how the breast has become very natural. So, and this is something you, you will not be able to achieve with implants because here, what you, what you have, you have a nice footprint of the breast. So the, the breast sits really well on the chest wall. It has a nice lower pole expansion. The transition zones uh, in between the breast and the chest wall are very smooth. You know, there is, it's not like, it doesn't look like an artificial breast. So, and you achieve those goals and remember the goals. You, so beautiful, natural, warm, comfortable, dynamic, stable, and harmony, you know? And this is what you get because what did you do? You respect the basic principle in reconstructive surgery. What has been taken away should be replaced by, by a lookalike. But at the expense of a scar, yeah? because autologous breast reconstruction means that you create a scar to heal the breast. Yeah? There's no other, uh, there's nothing else we can do about it. Yeah? We have to remove something. But the challenge is, is to uh, minimize the donor site mobility. So the, the scar in the lumbar flap is really well uh, accepted by the patients. Yeah? It, it is because most of the patients that tell me, you know, I don't mind about the scar. You know, the scar, you know, it is a visible scar above the bikini line because you, you are blocked by the bone. But I mean, they say, you know, I don't see the scar and over time it softens and, and it becomes, you know, part of, 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 uh, of the body. Mm. And um, so, but um, you see where she's coming from. This was, she, she didn't have any options in the other, in the other center. So the only option was implants. So with a, the lumbar flap has, has been a really good uh, technique in, in, in this case also. And she's actually a physician also. Yeah. In another case, it's um, uh, also a patient, you know, who had a, uh, a mastectomy. And also, once again here, you know, an implant, it's not a good idea because, you no, know, it's radiation therapy. If I put an implant in there, what will happen, uh, once again, I will tip that balance towards the other side, towards the dark side. Yeah? And the dark side means that you will create uh, cold breasts, a static volume it's not going to move it's not going to be stable i don't it's not going to look that beautiful also so she doesn't have that much abdominal tissue or tissue bulk in the belly in the belly region so once again we did a, 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 a lumbar flap we removed the skin and uh, the fat um, we also in this case we did the we also anastomosed the, the nerve so to restore the sensation, we did a nipple reconstruction and a nipple tattoo. So, and this is then the final result. And here you can see she has a nice lower pole expansion. The low, it's nicely well-defined lower pole. It's a nice footprint. She has a nice fold in the inferior part of the breast. And there is a smooth transition zone. That's also important, I think, with, with the chest wall. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's natural results. And this is then the scar at, uh, this is uh, one year and a half uh, post-op. You know, it is a scar, but in my opinion, it's a very acceptable scar also. Um, and in most of the cases, what we do um, when they come back for uh, revision surgery for the correction six months later, we perform liposuction of the other uh, love handle region to achieve more uh, symmetry. Mm. And this is the patient that I showed you in the beginning. She was one of my first uh, patients where I did uh, a lumbar flap it, uh, so many years ago already and um, you can see she's very skinny yeah? but she has no tissue in, in the abdomen she has no belly so but if you look on the right side she has you know like she had broad hips it's like more like like a, a bit of pear shaped but she has really nice uh, loft handle region where you can see that she has nice tissue and I forgot to tell you, but the, the quality of the fat 
of the lumber flap. It's a very nice, it's a very soft, pliable fat tissue that really shapes the breast. And that's very important compared to uh, an S cap. An S cap uh, with tissue taken from the gluteal area, the, the, the fat can be quite sturdy, a bit more rigid, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and so the shape of Nescap is is not is sometimes not very optimal, you know, and that's why a lumber flap is so so attractive because of the the quality of the softness of of that fat uh, in in that region, and so um and in this case also we did a, a bilateral lumber flap. If I do a bilateral case, I do one side, and then six weeks six weeks later I do the other side. So. Okay. You know, you, you can do it if you have if you have like a second or third surgeon helping you, you, you probably can do a bilateral case, but if you do it by yourself, it's it's quite uh, quite intensive. Mm. So and this is then the result where where you 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 will be surprised how much tissue can be taken, even in skinny patients. Mm. And and you see that the scar uh, on the lower back, uh, and this is her after nipple reconstruction and uh, tattoo. Um, and then the last case, it's an example, again, once again, it's a young patient, they all, all very young often. Um, so she doesn't have enough tissue for a bilateral deep flap. So she had a, a, a breast cancer with a removal of the breast on the right side, but she is diagnosed, she has a genetic predisposition for breast cancer. So we needed to perform a immediate reconstruction of the left side. And uh, once again, in this case, so she has some tissue in the love handle region. We removed everything. We did a late reconstruction of the right breast and an immediate reconstruction of the left breast with a nipple reconstruction and a tattoo. And this is her scar. You know, it's, 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 uh, I, I always try to follow the contour of the, of the bone. Uh, I think that's very important to create a beautiful scar. So you know, um, the the lumber flap it's 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 a very it's technically challenging. You know, if you start doing these flaps, I can say it's because you know you work with very small vessels. You're always a bit afraid that you know the vessels are too small. You need some you need a bit of expertise in in micro even in in super micro surgery because you you are um, you are anastomosing very small vessels of one or two millimeter vessels, and it all needs to be done carefully. Um, recently, um, now I passed my series of more than 100 lumber flaps. Um, I think I have now a series of 100 and uh, must be 120 now, because this year we have been doing quite a lot. And just to show you that curve, so in the beginning, it's you know it's a slow start because you, it's it's new, it's a new technique. You you need to you know it's like bike riding you know if if you you know one of those uh, one of the surgeons at the London breast meeting told me you know oh Philip you know um, it it it's nice but you know I, I told him yeah but you know it's a learning curve he says yeah and that, that's normal it's like bike riding in the beginning you're falling and and then you stand up you you try again and and at the end you're you're off you know. And it's a bit the same with 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 these new techniques on new new uh, new innovations. So it's it's you you it's a slow start. It's a steep learning because you you change things. Like uh, we introduced that graft. It's very important. Uh, positioning the patient is, is very important. The right indications is very important. And um, so it's it's all tips and tricks that you learn. And um, you know. Um, Overall, um, I, we are now analyzing all our data, and you know, overall, the procedure uh, uh, unilateral or one side it lasts for five to seven hours. It's like a deep flap; uh, it's a bit longer than a deep flap. The hospital stay overall is about you now four days, so patients are four days in the hospital. Initially, people were uh, worried about the donor side. But overall, the donor side mobility is very acceptable. And um, you do can feel some uh, loss of sensation at the donor side, but it recovers. But there is still like a, a margin of like two centimeters that, that stays a bit uh, numb over time. Um, the, the only thing is that with the donor side, 
um, it's a region. Um, one of those advantages of the lumber flap is that the shape of that flap is perfect. It, it looks like a pyramid. So it has already the shape of a breast. And that's one of those biggest advantages of the lumber of the lumber flap. But because you are taking out that, that conic shape, you create some kind of gap in the left hand region. So it fills with fluid postoperatively. Mm. So they do develop like seroma, but then it's a seroma is easily treated by, by uh, uh, a puncture on, uh, at the outpatient clinic. So that, that, that's not an issue. One of the nice uh, characteristics of the flap is the tissue quality. So the fat is a really nice, pliable, soft fat that really gives you a nice upper pole. It can give you a nice lower pole. So the shape of the flap is really good. And also what we also see is that we haven't noticed any uh, fat necrosis in those flaps. You know what I mean? Flap necrosis means that part of that flap uh, becomes uh, uh, indurated, becomes hard because of bad vascularity. We haven't been, we haven't seen that in the, these flaps. Mm -hmm. The other advantage is also the nerves are long. You have very long uh, sen um, uh, sensory nerves that can be included in the flap. So you can easily, because of the length of those nerves, you can easily anastomose those nerves to the nerves in the chest wall to restore sensation. And we did, we did have patients that, you know, when they come for like, uh, after the nipple reconstruction, they come for the tattoo, normally in a deep flap, you know, they don't, they don't feel it. But in those, in the lumbar flap, we often need, need to uh, give some uh, local an anesthetic. You know, because they start feeling in the nipple again. So that that that's 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 fantastic. Mm. So this is a bit my. It's like a short resume of 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 um, the wonderful the wonderful world of the lumber flap. Because you know, um, it, it has been a really nice journey. And um, something about the that I think that's important also the failure rate and revision rate in those flaps. You know, with with the deep flap, it's around between 0 0.8, 1, 2%, you know. And um, initially we had uh, quite a, a quite uh, some revisions eh? mm -hmm. because it's a new technique, you know, we, we were, you know, uh, trying to uh, optimize the results. Um, and now it's about two, 3%. Eh? But um, for example, for example, this year, but I should touch wood, I haven't had any revision uh, of lumber flaps. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's really, it's, and that's, that's what I would like to stress out. It's, it's, it's a learning curve. It's not the kind of flap that you should start doing when you start your practice in breast reconstruction. You know, you first need to have a good training in microsurgery, in tissue handling also, which is very important. And, you know, but, you know, if you, if you're passionate about the job and, and you love it, then you will definitely be a good lumbar flap surgeon. So, um, Terry, I really would like to thank you for, for the opportunity of giving me, of, um, uh, of giving the opportunity to me to give me this talk. I think it, it's, it's a wonderful initiative of you and I hope you learned something and I hope that your audience will also. There we go. We froze for just a minute, Dr. Stillert. I am really glad you put your information at the end. Here's what I'd like to say as a patient. First of all, that was a brilliant presentation. And yes, I did learn a lot. Oh, okay, um, that's good. There is a word that you used frequently. So in terms of falling off the bike, getting on the bike, trying that bike ride, you use the word the flap is consistent. If if I were talking to a surgeon, a new surgeon or a surgeon who wants to try this, I would say, Dr. Stillert tells us this is a consistent flap. Get on the bike and give it a try. As a patient, what I loved hearing is those seven pillars that you that you outlined at the beginning. The fact that you can bring the nerve over for sensation, um, the fact that 
this is a warm and robust um, breast that can be reconstructed. The fact that the scar follows the love handle in the back. And I just want to say, I was thinking about this when you were giving the presentation. You know, when I'm with family, friends, and you're doing a photo, I thought about this when you were talking. You know, when you do a photo and you put your hand around someone when you're doing a photo together, right? I can tell you, yeah, even yeah. in the most slender of people I know, I always feel that love handle. Yeah. And, I, yeah, yeah. And, and I've often been surprised. I'm like, wow, they, they look so skinny, but wow, there's a love hand. I was thinking about that as you were giving your presentation. You would be surprised, you know. We we have been, we always uh, put those flaps on 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 a scale, and and um, the, the the weight of the flap ranges from like two hundred grams to even one kilo. Wow! We even took out flaps more than one kilo, so it's amazing. Um, but I think obese patients are not a good <laughs> not a good indication because of the weight of the flap. Yeah. Well, it's so lovely to be able to present these alternate flaps, you know, because we we're not all built the same way. We all don't have the same uh, body habitus, but certainly we need to present these alternate flaps. And when I, when people led me to you and, and the success that you've had and you not being fearful of getting on that bike and staying on that bike to be, become, you know, a fantastic bike rider in the world of lap flaps, I had to have you on the, the program. So I really do hope again that patients listen to this. I'm glad you put your uh, contact information um, at the end slide there. So they, and, but we'll do it too also in the video um, to reach yeah. out to you, both patients and surgeons, but to ask about this, you know, to ask about this in consult because it's patients, I think, a lot of times that do drive change. And um, so, yeah, thank you. Yeah, but I think it's an important message because, I mean, we, we have several techniques available nowadays to reconstruct the breast, and it's not one size fits all, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's a very important message because often um, you see patients that are really desperate, you know, a lot of those lumbar flaps, they came for, they came for a second opinion, and, and um, they, they would have been treated with, with, with implants or whatever, which mm -hmm. I know, I think they're but that's my humble opinion. I think better off without implants, you know. Um, but I think it's difficult also for patients to find the right information. You can see it. It's very, very, you know, it's very stressful also. Uh, you can see that when they come to your patient, they have been looking around for, for a long time. And um, I think, you know, your initiative is a very nice initiative because, you know, you also are a source of of, of well documented information, and 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 I think that's very important because people they really look for um, you know um, answers. You know? Yes, I I at the end of the day that's what that's what patients want, and I appreciate those kind words. I really do. If this mm -hmm. reaches one patient, ten patients, one surgeon, ten yeah. surgeons, we've done our job today. Yeah. And uh, so again, I'm talking to Dr. Uh, Philip Stillert in Belgium at uh, Ghent University Hospital. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Valkyrie. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.